So I've covered so much drama in the Mercedes world, but I really haven't touched my own drama with uh, Eurocharged. And I guess we should start on this today. So as you know, I went from kind of like covering how to tune, like do it yourself tuning, um, and just like general Mercedes type of stuff, you know, what people are searching for. So I ended up, you know, uh, reaching out to tuners, interviewing tuners. So we've got some great interviews with like DTK, a lot of good tuners like Rentec, uh, in our WiseTech, in our like archives, right? So I think that like at some point I needed to eat. I looked at tuning and thought to myself, okay, I can make money here because people are, are asking me to tune and I'm not really even advertising it. So I, I jumped into it and admittedly tuning is a much deeper world than you can imagine. Um, there's so many different parts and aspects to tuning, like there's like three major aspects, right? And that's just technical aspects. Then you have to deal with people. And the truth is not many people really know what tuning is. So you have to like educate your customer and, you know, like kind of guide them onto like what we can actually do and how we actually look at stuff. Because a lot of times people are looking at like PSI and things that, you know, that's not really what we, we can target with modern ECUs where we're just rewriting calibrations. Um, what we target are, you know, it, it's different per engine, but you know, it's not usually that, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, and then you have to deal with a lot of people uh, internationally because a lot of people in the tuning world are overseas. So you have to be able to communicate you know, clearly. So there's all of these things, right? But the one thing I didn't realize is how competitive my competitors would be. Um, and I gotta be honest, like Black Boost USA was really cool. Jose was really cool. Philip was really cool at VRP. I wasn't ex actually expecting that because I seen him be competitive with other people. So I thought to myself, you know, he's gonna give me a hard time, but he didn't, he was, he was really cool about that. Um, Christian has been great. Um, and the one person who really fucking hated me becoming a professional tuner was Eurocharged. And Eurocharged is interesting because they're, they're probably one of the biggest tuning companies I would imagine right now, even though they may not have like maybe the prestige of um, some of these other tuners like Gad and, and Brabus and what have you. Um, you know, I think a lot less people have heard about Rentec than like Mansori, but that, I mean, not Rentec, you know, uh, a lot less people have, well, yeah, probably a lot less people have heard of Rentec than Mansori, but to be honest, Rentec's more important than Mansori, right? A lot less, a lot of people have heard of Eurocharge because they're sort of like, um, I don't know, the McDonald's of tuning, right? Like they're a known quantity, like they have garages that they franchise out. So they, they've got like a franchise type business. So then they also have like dealers who buy in and they're not quite franchisees, but some of these guys are really intense, like in New York and whatever. Like, I don't even know these guys and they're fucking intense as shit. Um, and like these guys just jumped into the mix. Like really my beef is with Jake because basically he was taking, going out of his way to instruct his people to go on to tune Mercedes, uh, social platforms. And when people would ask for a tune for them to jump in and be like, you know, you should try our tunes. And, uh, he really sort of pushed the envelope with like, you know, what is or isn't allowed. And I just said, you know, man, there's like a line of being a dick and you've crossed it a long time ago because I'm not going on to Eurocharge. And he said, well, you should, you should, you should jump on Eurocharge. I was like, you know, man, maybe I would if I didn't have class. You know what I mean? Like, the reason why I didn't is because I have class, all right? Like, I'm a classy guy. Um, you know, my family, uh, I don't want to get into it too deeply, but we're not like blue butt Americans, all right? We, we did have, we've, we've come from, we know our history. First of all, my family knows our history, all right? We do have some stuff that like, we have been really high up and we've lost it a lot, uh, you know, several times. So like, I know what it's like to be rich. I know what it's like to be poor. Um, and you know, I was raised in a way that, you know, royal people would have been raised. All right. Like, like I can 
like, for example, one of my first girlfriends dumped me for fucking walking on the wrong side of the street. This is the type of society I was in, all right? I'm not going to fucking go on your page and try to sell my shit to your fucking patrons because it's classless, all right? And then, so he took it a step farther and just, like, instructed his people to, like, back him up on this. So I just said, look, if you want to fucking post, hey, look, these are our sales, and you want to put stuff that's informative to customers, Jake, do that. And he just is like, no. And then, like, his guy who runs Spool, I don't know, he's kind of a dick. He kind of posted a video of me, like, wearing that, like, Mario, you know, uh, suit. But, I mean, to be honest, I thought that movie was pretty good. All the critics were panning Mario. And it was a big deal to my son. He went out and bought those suits and shit. So, fuck it. I'm going to wear a fucking Mario suit. You know, fuck you. Whatever the fuck your name is. And that's the other thing. It's like, I really genuinely don't give a shit about, uh, like, in general, what the fuck Jake from State Farm or whatever his name is, is eating or not eating. It doesn't affect me. I can tell you, though, that that was sort of how I perceived it. And then it kind of took on its own life when 